Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Ooh, well, this is new. Anyway, something that I personally really think is fun to do is top-down shooting. And it's actually quite different from regular top-down movement like we showed how to do in a recent video, because the player always needs to point towards the mouse. So in this video we'll set up a top-down player complete with movement, aiming and shooting. But first, this video is sponsored by Jason Wyman. If you haven't already heard about him, he's the creator of the amazing Unity 3D Masterclass, which takes you all the way from the very fundamentals of game dev to using Unity on a professional level. It will teach you the principles of solid code architecture and how to build a variety of game types. What's so cool about this course is that you get to work alongside other students and get live one-on-one -on -one help from Jason himself. He also has an amazing VR course, which will teach you how to work with VR and even make a game. At the end you will have made multiple finished games and even have the opportunity to customize and show off your unique work to the class. Sign up now and the first 50 people will get a free t-shirt from Line of Code as well as a big discount and other bonuses on both courses. Simply click the link in the description to get started. Also I'm really excited to announce that we will be attending Unite Copenhagen later this month. If you've never been to Unite, it's a huge game developer conference hosted by Unity and I hear this one is going to be particularly big. Of course it's in Copenhagen, which is also also our home city and the event will be taking place from the 23rd to the 26th of September. Tickets are up for grabs now and since we are also going, we talked to Unity and they agreed to give everyone a 20% discount. Simply click the link in the description and use this coupon code. Note that this doesn't work for training day passes, but I really hope to see a lot of you there. Alright, with that said, let's get shooting. So as you can see I've set up a quick example scene here. The sprites that I'm using for the environment is from the tiny RPG forest pack. And for the player I'm going to be using a soldier from the armored soldiers 2D pack. The link's in the description for both if you want to use them and they are of course 100% free. So from the armored soldiers pack I've gone ahead and taken this sprite right here from the PSD file. It's just a simple red soldier sprite. You can use any sprite that you'd like. I'm just going to go ahead and set the ordinary layer to 10 here to make sure that he appears on top of everything else. And now we're ready to start setting up our player. So the first thing that he needs is a rigid body. I'm going to hit add component and search for rigid body 2D. I'm going to set the gravity scale to zero to make sure that he doesn't fall down. And I'm also going to freeze his rotation on the Z. This is not because we don't want him to rotate, we definitely want him to do that, but we want to be able to control that rotation ourselves. This way we can make sure that he always points towards the mouse and that he won't go off course if he collides with something. And with that we can add our player movement script. The player movement script is of course going to be responsible for moving around our player, but it's also going to take care of aiming. So let's go ahead and hit add component here. Let's write player movement. Let's hit create an add. And let's double click to open it up in Visual Studio. So first of all we can go ahead and delete the start method here. And we are of course going to need a few variables. The first of which is a float to control our movement speed. Let's call it move speed and set it equal to 5 by default. We also need a reference to our rigid body component. Because this is the one that's going to be moving around our player. So let's create a public rigid body 2D and let's call it RB. Now of course whenever we're doing movement in Unity we want to split it up into two functions. We want to use our update function for getting the input for our movement, so this is where we will trigger our movement. And then we'll use a void fixed update function for actually moving our player based on this input. So let's start by gathering some input in our update function. Here we're going to be using input.getAxisRaw. And first of all we want the horizontal axis. And we of course want to store this in a variable so that we can access it inside of our fixed update. So let's go ahead and create a vector2, let's call it movement. And then inside of our update we can set movement on our x equal to input.getAxisRaw horizontal. We can then do the same thing for our y, so movement.y equals input.getAxisRaw. And this time we'll of course use vertical. So we're now gathering our input on the x and the y and we can then use that to actually move around our player inside of the fixed update. So here we'll write rb to access the rigid body. We'll use a function called move position and this will simply move our object to the position that we input. In our case we want to move it to our current position, so rb.position plus our movement vector. And we can then multiply this with our move speed to be able to control the speed of this movement as well as time.fixed delta time in order to make sure that the speed of our movement will not depend on how many times a fixed update is called. So this should give us a nice smooth uniform movement. 
In fact, if we just save this, we can jump into Unity, select our soldier, drag in our rigid body 2D component to the RB slot, and then hit play. And as you can see, I can now move around the player using the WASD keys or the arrow keys. Really cool. So now that our movement is in place, we can start to look at aiming. And the idea of this is exactly the same. We find some input inside of our update method and we aim inside of the fixed update. So first of all, to get some input, we'll be using input.mouseposition. And this is simply the current position of our mouse in pixel coordinates. And this is exactly what we want. However, our game doesn't exist in pixel coordinates. It exists in in-game units. So we need to convert this position from a screen point to a world point. And we do this using a simple function on our camera. Of course, that means we need a reference to our camera. So let's go in here and create a public camera. And let's just call it cam. We can then access this camera by going cam dot and then use the function called screen to world point. So this will convert our mouse position from pixel coordinates to world units. There we go. And we can then store this in another variable. So let's create another vector two. Let's call it mouse position or just mouse pause for short. And let's set mouse pause equal to our cam.screen to world point where we input our mouse position. So now that we know exactly where our mouse is, all we need to do is rotate our player to face that point. And we do this in two steps. So the first thing that we need to do is get the direction to our mouse position from where we are currently standing. To do this, we simply subtract the two vectors. So we'll create a vector tool. This is going to be the direction that we want to look in. And it's going to simply be equal to our mouse position minus our current position. If you've never dealt with vector math before, this might be completely new to you. But if you take two vectors and subtract them, you're going to get a vector that points from one to the other. So in this case, if we have our player position right here, and we have our mouse position up here, we're simply going to subtract the two vectors and get a vector that points from our player to our mouse position. However, in order to actually rotate our player, we don't just need a direction, instead we need an angle. In other words, we need to know what to set our Z rotation of our player to in order to point in that direction. To do this, we use a function called attan2. So we'll create a float, call it angle, and this is the Z rotation and we'll set it equal to mathf.attan2. And here we're going to input a few things. So what is attan2? Well, attan2 is a function, it's a mathematical function that returns the angle between the x-axis and a 2D vector starting at zero and terminating at x comma y. So that might sound really complicated, but in reality, it's actually fairly graphically simple. So here's a graph explaining attan2. If we imagine our player is standing at the center here, and we imagine that this black dot here is our mouse position at this time, well then we can simply use the attan2 function where we input the x and y position of our mouse, and it's then going to find the angle from our x-axis to this directional vector. And that's exactly what we need because we already have this directional vector here pointing from our player to the mouse. It's what we created just here. So we're simply going to take our x and y of a look dear vector. And this is a tiny weird quirk with the attend2 function is that it takes in the y first and then the x. So we're going to put in look dear dot y and then look dear dot x. That's all we need. Of course, attend2 returns the angle in radians. So we need to change that to degrees. And so we'll multiply with math if rad two degree. And this is simply a constant, it's 57.29578, you can see it here. And it's just a conversion from radians to degrees, it's, it's that simple. And finally, I found by testing this that in order to get my player to point in the right direction, I need to offset this with 90 degrees. So if your player is actually following the mouse, but always pointing at a 90 degree angle, then you can always subtract or add 90 degrees to suit your needs here. And finally, we can apply this to our player. So we'll simply go rb.rotation equals the angle that we just calculated. So if we now save that and go into Unity, and here we need to reference our camera. So I'm simply going to drag in our main cam here. And let's then hit play. As you can see, our player is now looking in the direction of my mouse at all times. Really, really cool. And we can, of course, move him around at the same time. Awesome.
So at this point we are moving around and we are aiming and so we are ready to start shooting some stuff. And the first thing that we're going to do here is add a fire point. This is just an empty object that will specify from where we want to instantiate our bullets. So in my case for the soldier here I'm going to right click, hit create empty and I'm going to press W to switch to the move tool here. And I'm simply going to take this object here and move it to the end of the soldier's barrel. You can move this to anywhere you want your bullet to fire from. I'm simply going to call this the fire point and that's pretty much it for that. We of course also need to create a bullet. Now I've taken another sprite from the armored soldiers pack. You can of course use any sprite that you'd like. I'm simply going to click and drag this in and here is what I'm going to be using as a bullet. Of course in order to make this into an actual bullet we need to give it a rigid body 2D. Again we'll set the gravity scale to zero and we'll just leave all the other properties as is. I'm also going to add a collider to this bullet so that we can later register whenever it hits something. I'm just going to use a symbol box collider 2D. I'm going to hit edit collider here and just place it around the bullet. So now that we've set up our bullet we can go ahead and drag it into our project panel and this is going to make a prefab out of it so then we can remove it from our scene and we can then create a script that is going to spawn in this bullet whenever we need it. So on our soldier here let's go ahead and create another script now and let's call this one shooting. Let's hit new script, create an ad. Again I'm going to delete the start method here and instead I'm going to add in a few variables. I'm going to create a public transform and this is simply going to be a reference to our firepoint object. I'm also going to create a public game object and this is going to reference our bullet prefab that we just created. And finally let's create a public float which is going to control the bullet force. And let's just default that to something like 20. Now inside of our update we can check whenever we want to fire. So we'll go if input.get button down and the button that we want to check for here is fire1. Fire1 is one of those default input bindings in Unity. If you haven't changed it it's going to be bound to mouse1. Now remember that Unity is currently reworking the entire input system. I cannot imagine this not working for quite a while but if it is giving you issues definitely check out our dedicated video on the new input system. You should be able to just slap that right into this script. Alright so whenever we press this button we want to go ahead and shoot. So let's create a dedicated function for that. Let's just call it shoot and let's go ahead and make it down here. So we'll write void shoot, open close some parentheses and curly brackets. And this function is actually going to be fairly simple. We want to do two things in here. First of all we want to create a bullet at our fire point and second of all we want to apply a lot of force to this bullet to make it fly out of the gun. So let's start by creating the bullet. We do this using the instantiate function. Here we feed it the prefab that we want to create. So we want to make a bullet prefab. We also give it a position. So we want to spawn it at firepoint.position as well as a rotation. We want to use firepoint.rotation. There we go. That creates our bullet. However, we also need to be able to reference this bullet in order to modify it afterwards. In our case we want to add a force to it. So to retain a connection to the bullet we are going to write game object bullet and set it equal to the instantiated bullet. This way we can now use this bullet variable. So in order to access the rigid body 2D we'll use bullet dot get component rigid body 2D. There we go. And we can then store this in another variable. So we'll create a rigid body 2D, call it RB and set it equal to the rigid 2D of the bullet. And finally we can then access this RB and use the function add force. And so we can add a force in the direction of our fire point dot up vector multiply it with our bullet force and the force mode here force mode 2D is going to be impulse because we want to add an instant force impulse to the rigid body 2D. So again what's happening here well we're instantiating spawning in our bullet we're saying at this point we want to name it bullet so that we can access it later. We then access this bullet and get the rigid body 2D component on the bullet. We call this component RB. We use it to access a function on the component called add force where we add a force in the firepoint.up vector multiplied with the bullet force. I totally understand if you find this code confusing. It is definitely a bit confusing. Just know that we are creating the bullet and we're making it fly at a high velocity. 
And with that, let's try and save this. Go into Unity. Here we'll drag in our fire point. We'll also drag in our bullet prefab. And if we now hit play and click our mouse, we can see that a bullet indeed does fly out. It also kind of collides with everything that it touches and it just simply stays there. But we do definitely have bullets and we can now shoot all around, which is really cool. So the final thing that we need to do is of course make our bullet react to it hitting something. So to do this, we can simply go to a bullet prefab and add a new component. And here we'll create a bullet script. Let's double click it to open it up. And we can remove both the update and the start function here because all we need in here is a function that triggers whenever we collide with something. And Unity of course has one of these by default. It's called void on collision into 2D. Now this function also takes in an argument of type collision 2D and we can just call it, well, collision. And what this is doing is simply gathering some information about what happened in this collision. So in here we can get some information about what we hit, so the collider that we made contact with. We can also get the relative velocity between the two colliding objects. There's a bunch of information in here. And this is of course super useful if you want to damage whatever you hit because you can access components on the colliding object. However, for now, all we want to do is just add a cool explosion effect and remove a bullet. So to do this, we need a reference to a prefab that we can instantiate with this explosion. So we'll create a public game object. Let's call it hit effect. And I've actually already gone ahead and prepared an effect using some sprites I had from another asset store pack called Warped Caves. I'll of course have a link to this in the description as well, but I've simply gone ahead and created a short animation out of these that will place a tiny explosion. So I'm simply going to go to my bullet here and just drag in this hit effect. You can use anything you'd like. You can also use particle effects if you want to. And then inside of our script, we can just instantiate it in the exact same way that we did with our bullet. So let's go instantiate. We want to instantiate the hit effect. We want to do that at the current position of our bullet. So transform.position. And we really don't care what way this is rotated. So we'll just use the default rotation, which is referred to as quaternion.identity. Yes, we use this super weird word for just saying no rotation. And of course, we also want to remove our bullet afterwards. So we'll call destroy game object. And just to be good with our code, we also want to make sure that we clean up all of these hit effects. So we're simply going to create a temporary variable that is going to store a reference to it, just like we did with our bullet, and then call the destroy function on this effect and just delay it by say five seconds. So this way, all hit effects are going to be removed after five seconds, just so they don't lie around our scene. So with that, let's hit save. Let's go back into Unity and let's try and play. And as you can see, when we now shoot and hit something with our bullet, it explodes and disappears. Really, really, really cool. Now, of course, there are a bunch of other stuff that you can do with shooting. Most importantly, you probably want to add some damage in case you are fighting enemies. And there's, of course, also other ways of shooting to explore. This is what I refer to as prefab shooting because we are instantiating a prefab or a game object and having it fly through our scene. However, another really common way is raycast shooting where we simply do everything through code and this way we can have the bullet hit instantaneously, which is really cool for stuff like lasers. Luckily, we have a video dedicated to 2D shooting that takes a look at all these things. I also recommend adding stuff like muscle flares to your player and just a bunch of other flavorful effects. So I definitely encourage you to have fun with it, but this should be a nice starting point. That's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Definitely learn more about Unite Copenhagen using the link in the description. Remember, tickets do sell out quite fast. Also, don't forget to check out Jason's courses. Simply click the link in the description to get a free t-shirt and get started. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video, which is going to be on the Community Game Jam. Hello, one of <laughs> <laughs> I has got long hair. <laughs> thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in July, and a special thanks to Infinity PPR, Dennis Sullivan, Lost to Violence, Love Forever, Chris, Faisal Marify, David Lipka, Leo the Set, Runen, Daniel Tosanic, Jacob Sanford, Constantinus Kurenzas, Naoki Wasaki, Gregory Pierce, Alison the Fierce, Erasmus, and Kul Swiderski. You guys rock.